Hey guys, what up? This video is brought to you by Linode, web hosting company. If you guys are trying to set up a server, want to run some Linux, you can use Linode. They're actually really cheap, and I have tutorials to show you guys how to set that up. There's also a $20 credit in the link below, so if you click on that, you get basically up to four months free if you get you know just a $5 a month account. Um, and yeah, just give it a look. I have all the tutorials on how to set that up. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're going to be talking about why Django is awesome. Django 3.0 just recently came out, and this framework is actually one of my favorite frameworks. I, I go back with Django about 10 years now. When I was first getting into Python development, I needed to have a web framework, and I looked to Django, and, and when I was a very young beginner programmer, I, uh, I, I couldn't figure it out. Like It was too difficult. I could go through some of the tutorials. Every time I tried to deviate a little bit, I ran into problems, but then... You know, fast forward to today, I realize now that that's just web development for you or programming in general. So we're always going to have those problems. But for me, I ended up like looking for a different framework. So I, I ended up going to something called Web2Pi. I worked with some of the, uh, the, the core founders there, like Massimo. He's a friend of mine on Facebook and uh, Bruno. And I, I, like, I really looked up to those guys and, and they were trying to build their community support. So they embraced like these young kids that had no idea what they were doing. And I say kids, I started programming at 28, but um, the, the point was I had no idea what I was doing. So this community definitely held like a branch out for me, but eventually I ended up kind of outgrowing that framework and then moving back into Django. And I realized that uh, Django had pretty much everything I was looking for, for the type of websites I was building. And what type of websites are those? Um, really almost anything. Now, when Django was first created, it was created with a news type of uh, site in mind. Like it was actually built around uh, a newspaper company. So some of the earliest companies that started adapting to Django was like the Washington Post. So a website like this that's now known for their pop-up paywalled channels, which really drives me crazy because uh, I, I hate getting results where you get that pop-up that says, hey, you got to pay money to watch the, or read this article. And I'm like, nah, not going to do it. Um, I'll get my news free. Thank you. But anyway, uh, Washington Post, one of the biggest newspaper companies out there. And them moving to the web, this is the type of stuff that Django excels at, like, uh, you know, a bloggy type of format. Like every m modern day, like whether it's CNN or Fox News or any of that stuff, it's very bloggy type. They all look the same for the most part. They're kind of... Um, I feel like there's too much content on the page. Like we need to get like a uh, just a cleaner look. But uh, that's besides the point. The thing is, Django supports all of that stuff. And one of the reasons why all the newspaper companies were using it was because Django had a built-in content management system. And some people even m uh, mis mistook Django for being a content management system. And, and technically, it's a lot more than that. It's a full-scale web framework. But Django has something called uh, the Django Admin. And um, I could show you, but here's like documentation from their website. This back end here is something that is already working for you. And it makes a ton of sense when it comes to actually managing your data. This doesn't really do a whole lot of justice. This is um, as far as my explanation is concerned. This is all the documentation, but uh, here's a good image. I just want to show you that like when you're dealing with users and what, what permissions those users have, uh, who can read, obviously, certain blogs and access certain pages, um, what the blog titles should be, how you can sort and filter all those. And it doesn't just have to be blogs. Like, I, I created a movies website where this is kind of a story where you can kind of fake it till you make it. But I was trying to do a movies website, doing movie reviews and all this stuff. I spent a lot of time on it. And it was a dynamic database-driven application. And at, the fir at first, it was using MySQL. I ended up using Postgres, which is also part of my point of this video is that Django supports all the modern database systems out there from, like I said, MySQL, Postgres. Uh, and there's even like exploratory uh, type stuff with even uh, NoSQL stuff like MongoDB, but it's not really recommended. This is more for the traditional relational database approach, which is really what most large companies are using just because of the stability and the querying uh, and the ACID, uh, meaning that when you make a database write that you're guaranteed guaranteed that the write is actually going to go through. Um, Django provides all that stuff where like, like no, no SQL doesn't. But that being said, um, the support for pretty much anything you need, my, dy my dynamic database driven application had like uh, different web pages for movie stars and then the movie stars you could, uh, you could see all the movies that they were in. 
uh, click on any movie, see their stars. So you can just sort of like bounce around, and obviously you're just bouncing around the database. But uh, Django was al allowed me as a rel relatively new developer uh, the ability to create a full scale web application. Uh, and when I talk about fake it till you make it, I actually reached out to different companies. Like I was part of the Warner Brothers press group, Lionsgate. I got invited to like uh, the Oscar press stuff. I would get uh, all kinds of different like uh, junkets and things like that of uh, of movie releases simply because I had a website that looked professional enough where I was like, hey, I got a company, a website, and I reached out to all these different companies and they validate, you know, that you have a business and they validate that you have a website. And if it looks professional, you're in, you know what I mean? So I've seen that. Now, the problem with something like what I was trying to build is that I simply was not able to scale that as one person and have enough content to make it something that, that was going to make money. So even though I made 200, like I was, uh, my, my peak was around 250,000 visitors in a single month on a Django platform running Linode, uh, uh, or Linode really running Django. But, um, the, the, the whole point is that Django made that possible. If I were going to try to do the same thing in Node, even with Node Express, not possible for me. Uh, WordPress is a bunch of sp spaghetti code, in my opinion. I look at the PHP stuff, and I'm not a big PHP guy, but when I look at PHP and I look at some of these plugins for PHP, like WooCommerce and all this other stuff, to me it looks like spaghetti code compared to something like C Sharp and .NET or Python and Django. Um, and I'm sure other people feel differently, but uh, it, it's just really, really, uh, my, it's shitty in my opinion. But um, anyway, Django makes the hard things possible and, uh, and possibly even the impossible things possible. So I think, and I still swear by Django, like if I were going to do a full scale, full web application that is going to have a lot of user permissions and things like that, then I'm going Django. Uh, and now Django 3 being out has a lot of different features. So like it now supports MariaDB if you guys are ever using that. This is really just a spinoff of MySQL though, so it's nothing too spectacular. Uh, it's just promising to be free where MySQL used to be free and promised to be free, but now they're not since they're owned by Oracle. Um, but that said, the, the biggest thing with Django 3 is that it now has support for this ASCII, uh, or ASCII web uh, interface. So this is actually what allows Python to run on web servers. So if you have an Apache web server or Nginx or something like that, um, you have to have modules. Like for Apache, you have to have a module called WSGI installed and there's different types of WSGI modules out there there's like um there's like mod WSGI and a couple of other ones that i'm failing yeah c fast cgi mod python all this difference anyway uh no that's not what i'm talking about anyway so there's mod WSGI and then there's like uh the u WSGI. Yeah, that's what i was thinking of u WSGI. I, i've used both of them for my django applications but it's a interface that allows Python to work with web servers. So if you're dealing with Apache or something, in order for Python to actually work with Apache, you have to have these modules installed. Now, at the ASCII, though, that is going to allow Python to be fully asynchronous. So Django is now supporting that. So Django is hoping to have the option where you can make it fully asynchronous. Like one of the big selling points of Node.js, which is its own runtime, is that it's non-blocking, it's fully asynchronous, meaning that it can take as many requests as, po as you throw at it. The problem is, is those things end up sitting on a queue and they get served one at a time. And, uh, and a lot of those, uh, the, the, the serving that you need to do, if it's making a call to a database or some other you know, API network request, there's going to be some sort of blocking uh, that, that occurs along the way, but the server stack itself is able to just always remain respondent and, uh, and, and just continue to build that queue up. And um, now with Django, you could do that through this new ASCII method. Now, if you did have background tasks that needed to be asynchronous before, you could technically have done this uh, even before ASCII with something like uh, Python Celery. That, that's something that like, can run in the background so you're not blocking your application if you need to do a database call every so often or reach out to an API or something like that. So there were ways around it. Um, and another thing that I think Django is awesome for is when I was building a website, like some of the stuff, like I remember I, I, I worked with Redbox and I had an API call that went out to Redbox. So Redbox didn't change their stuff all the time. In fact, they only changed it like every Friday or Tuesday. Uh, I think it was Friday and Tuesday, but I didn't need to call them day in and day out. So it was a, it was a big database read. So if I were to have that database read on every single request to the page that had this Redbox integration, then it was going to end up blocking the page for too long. So I ended up using something called memcache. 
and uh, and all these different tools that are uh, out there to speed up your performance and make your server more respondent and all this stuff. That stuff works with Python Django because Django is the biggest, largest web framework in the Python community, which is one of the reasons why you want to learn it. So all that being said, Django 3 coming out, uh, it's, it's uh, a really good... It's really good progress, I think, for this uh, web stack. And honestly, it's still my web stack of choice when I uh, look at all of them. And I, I've done now 10 years of development with C-sharp.net and uh, a lot of Node stuff. I do a lot of, obviously, JavaScript and React and all this stuff. And that's the thing. Like, if you want to use React or Angular, it doesn't matter. Like, Django has its own template engine. You could make Django a single-page application. Django has something called Django REST Framework if you wanted to use that for... Um, a more complicated RESTful API. So a lot of people say Flask is better for RESTful APIs, and that's just bullshit. That's just Flask being easier to get started with out of the gate. But uh, Django has full support where you could build your own RESTful API, or you could use a tool like Django REST Framework, which I'm not a huge fan of. Most of the, my APIs don't need to be that complicated where I need to, to have a tool like that, but um, you know, a lot of people do. And, um, yeah, I mean, th those are some of the main reasons why I think Django is awesome. And just personally speaking, I, I put it ahead of a lot of these other frameworks and languages. In fact, all of them that I've ever messed with, I, I don't know of any that I think is as easy to use as Django. And a lot of people will complain uh, that Django has a, a steep learning curve, but so does everything else. I mean, try to learn MVC.net and tell me that that doesn't have a steep learning curve. Uh, and even Node.js, you want to start getting into the core sockets and, uh, you know, sock.io and all that stuff of, uh, of Node.js and tell me that's not complicated. So it, it, you're going to have complications anytime you're building something difficult. Now, you guys are probably thinking I'm trying to sell you something. And really, I'm not. I got no vested stake in this game, but I do like Django. And, and uh, the thing is, you don't have to sell Django because it's free. So Python is the, the language that it uses. Python's freely uh, downloadable and installable on any sort of Mac, Linux, or, uh, or uh, Windows OS. And then once you have Python installed, you just simply pip install Django or pip environment install Django. And uh, from there, you just spin up your application and start working. And then Django itself, you don't have to use any sort of complicated editor, editor or anything like that. Uh, for me, I recommend just Visual Studio Code these days. I can fully debug uh, Django projects using a free... Uh, editor like this with the Python extension installed and uh, it, it like it all just works pretty seamlessly so everything's free to use it's only going to be your time to learn and and one of the great things about Django as well is that it's been around now since uh, 2006 and it hasn't changed an, a ton like when like the Django core way of doing things is it's still in existence the team is still growing and strong they keep their promises when it, when they talk about the actual support that they're going to have for however long. Like, they have certain releases where they'll say, we guarantee that we're going to provide support for this for at least five, six, seven years, something like that. So that's what companies are looking for. That's why a lot of companies use Microsoft and Java-based stuff because companies promise to support it. And when you're dealing with literally hundreds of millions of dollars or even millions of dollars flowing through your business account, you want that type of support and you're willing to pay for it. And Django's completely free and it's open source. So that coming from uh, the community is, is a pretty uh, cool thing, but they've kept their word on that stuff. So Django itself is all available open source. So if you ever wanted to see the source code, in fact, I contributed to the source code at one, one point or, not, or, or another, um, that it's all there on GitHub. So you can actually see what they're doing with it as they're building it. And here's all the different versions here. And, Obviously, you can see stable 3.0 is the version that came out. And this is all the work. So if I want to look at all the different commits in there, you can see uh, what's going on. And already that it's 165 uh, or 346 commits behind the master, which is like the, you know, obviously the, the future versions of what Django will be. All right. And a few other things I'll mention is that if you guys are trying to learn Django, there literally is no better option than to go to the official documentation and do the poll uh, tutorial that they show you how to do. It shows you how to deal with the database, set up the admin, install, all that stuff. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also check out this video I have here. It's about an hour and 10 minutes long. And this is going to show you, obviously, visually how I go through and set up a Django stack. Now, this isn't using Django 3.0, but it's going to be roughly 95% equivalent. I just created it 
like a month ago, so it's not old at all. Um, the source code of Django does not change that much where like you're going to look at something like this and be like, oh, it completely doesn't work. Like it's not, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Django is pretty backwards compatible. So if you guys are trying to get started on Django, I recommend that video to get you started. I will extend it, um, but that at least shows you how to get a full stack web application up and running with templating uh, and even getting modern tools installed. So if you're trying to get like a, a Django and React web app or Angular or Vue or any of that stuff, then it's going to get you well on your way to get to getting that done. So the link will be in the description tab below. All right, guys. So that's my thoughts on Django and why it's awesome and why I personally think it's awesome. I think you guys, you guys should check it out. Check out that tutorial to get you started. And good luck. Take care. Bye.